Welcome back to Stuff They Should Taught You in School. Today's episode, we're talking about flipping the worst traits into the best traits. So here we're looking at essentially the reality of when we look into a trait of someone or into our own selves and we say that that is bad or that is good. Is it really good? Is it really bad? Today, we're going to discuss that. So before we get into it, um, these episodes are done in one take and that means I might hiccup or something like that. So anyway, um, the reality is nothing is as you may think it is. And things that once look good can be bad and things that once look bad can be good. So I give you a really basic example. And then I'm going to go on to explain. I've got a few um, traits here that maybe can be looked at as good or bad and we can flip them but either way so there's a very easy example that we can use is that say your father was a drunk unfortunately and um he was addicted to alcohol and he was not very nice maybe he beat you maybe he beat your mother or you know he wasn't a nice guy so now the father being the alcoholic is the trigger point the word a bad trait so you could say you could easily say i have an addictive personality because my father's got an addictive personality and you could even easily become a drunk my father was a drunk that's why i'm a drunk it's very easy to do that it's very easy to use that as an excuse an excuse to say essentially write off my entire life because of whatever else happened that my parents did this my parents did that they didn't do this they didn't do that and because of that, now I am now the way that I am. And I'm going to justify it because of something that's happened in the past. Now, the past to a certain extent does obviously influence us and change who we are for good or bad. But really, the point of this episode is to show you that it can be looked at as bad. It can be looked at as good. So in this analogy, my father is a drunk and now I am a drunk. You could have it. A very the, the same you could essentially have twins imagine twins yeah their father is a drunk they beat the mother not very nice shouting and screaming this and that whatever the one twin would then turn around 10 20 years later and say i am a drunk i have an addictive personality i can't hold down a job because my dad was the same another part the other twin could say i never touch alcohol i never you know um got involved with any sort of drugs or alcohol or smoking or anything and i leave a absolutely clean life because my father was a drunk so you see there the two different mindsets one is taking that negative potentially negative thing and we don't know really this is the point is we don't know that the fact that the father was a drunk you could use that as an excuse to destroy your entire life yes or you could use that as an excuse to do something great with your life and then in that way, you could look at it and say, if my father wasn't a drunk, I wouldn't have pushed myself not to drink alcohol. I wouldn't have pushed myself to do bed. I wouldn't have, you know, uh, really pushed for, and worked so hard in X, Y, Z or did this and did that. And now I have X, whatever it is that there is. So um, you could have those twins and, and one could be homeless and drunk and the other one could be. I don't know, a millionaire managed to retire and put his dad through re rehab, uh, managed to get his mum and them to you know have a nice house, pay off the mortgage, whatever. And supposedly that is the positive, right? And I say that because really we don't ever know whether things are good or bad. So I'll give you a, a story, a Chinese, I call it the Chinese farmer story. I don't actually know what it's actually called or if it was a Chinese farmer I think it was but I've known this story for so long and it sat with me because when you look into life and you really look into things that happen around the world and um, and you fundamentally look at anything you realize it's all waves it's all up and down it's all day and night and you don't get the day without the night you don't get the night without the day so you can never say I hate night, I really hate night, and I really love day, because the reality is, is you, you have to have both, it's two sides of the same coin. So in this story, uh, you imagine a Chinese farmer, or any kind of farmer, 
and one day his horse ran away. And all the neighbours come round and they say, oh no, isn't that so terrible? Your horse has run away, what are you going to do? Uh, the next day, the horse comes back and brings with it seven wild horses. All the neighbours come round, oh my god, isn't this amazing? What a stroke of great luck, you know. You're, um, there's now a load of horses here and and you've, you've now, the horses come back and everything. And this is great. Then the next day, um, the, um, the son of the farmer tries to break in one of these wild horses and gets thrown, breaks, breaks his leg. All the neighbours come round. Oh my God. Oh my God. This is so terrible. This is so terrible. Um. How are you going to manage the farmland? Your son has broken the leg. He did X, Y, Z every day. He woke up early and helped you with all the farm and all the crops and everything. And then the next day, the army officers come round and say, we're going to gather young men for the army. And they reject the son because of his broken leg. So then the neighbours come round, of course. Oh, my God, your son got out. Isn't that great? Now, we could continue this story. That to say that, okay, well, if the son, you know, they needed one extra man or something, and if the son was there, then maybe he would have made that shot in the army and the way he would have won the war or whatever. We can continue. But the point here is that something that once looks negative can then be positive and then negative and then positive and then negative and then positive and until the nth degree until you drive yourself crazy. So the reality is, is nothing really is good or bad. It's essentially someone said this i can't remember who nothing is good or bad but thinking makes it so it's about how you take things so when we look at our own worst traits or our own best traits can we flip these can we train our mind to look at things differently i believe we can so here's some examples so if we think about stubbornness we can think about that as a negative view unwilling to change or adapt to anything um, but we can look at that, actually flip it, and we turn stubbornness into determination. And what does that show? It shows, it, it shows commitment and persistence. Okay, next one, perfectionism. Everyone says, I'm a perfectionist, I can never get anything done. I tell them all to fuck off, really. Um, we can flip that into attention to detail. So we can first say that potentially negative view is obsessive about flaws. That leads to stress and inefficiency and all this sort of stuff. But the positive view is it ensures high quality work and it ensures thorough, that the person is very thorough with the work and thoughtful with the work we can think about overthinking and we can think that you get paralysis um paralysis by analysis or that you're thinking about things so much that you're essentially paralyzed by indecision or worry but we can flip that into analytical thinking ability to foresee potential problems and prepare solutions and we can think about aggressiveness. We can think about that as being overbearing and hostile. But actually, we can also think about it as assertiveness, confidently standing up for themselves and for other people, hopefully. Um, pessimism, we can turn that into realism, always expecting the worst into for understanding and preparing for potential challenges and mitigating risks. We can think about laziness into efficiency so unwilling to put effort in rather than or finding the easiest and most efficient way to complete something we can think about anxiety uh, and we can think about you know excessive worrying that hinders performance and hinders a lot of things but actually we can look at it as heightened awareness alertness we can look at turn anxiety into alertness heightened awareness of surroundings and potential risks we can think about selfishness and selfishness. I've said many times before, selfishness is a good thing and it's necessary. And we can look at it to say, oh, we prioritize over oneself. You know, we prioritize ourselves over everyone else excessively. And we do that to the detriment of others. Now, when we look at things like this, we're always pushing it to extremes, right? So a super selfish person isn't great. A super selfless person isn't great. It's a balance like everything is in life. But really, the positive view, and we can turn self selfishness into self-care, and that ensures personal well-being and essentially sets boundaries, right? So if you, if you, this is the thing, essentially, you cannot pour from an empty cup. 
You cannot help other people unless you yourself have taken that selfish decision to eat the food, to stop working, take a break, to um, sleep properly, to say no when you feel like it's getting all too much and take time out. And don't feel bad for it because the reality is, is if you don't look after yourself, how the hell are you going to look after all of those other people, all those other obligations that you have or that you think that you have? How are you ever going to fulfill those if you crash and burn? You're going to be fucked. So next one. Um, this is the last one I've got actually written down is procrastination. So we can turn that one into more of a relaxed approach so we can think about uh, delays tasks, uh, unnecessarily delays tasks for no reason at all. Um, and we can turn that into work well under pressure and often produces good results when it matters. So we think about cramming. Cramming works. This is the thing people think. People frown upon cramming. And what I mean by that is, say you've got two weeks to study for an exam. A lot of people will do all the work in the, in the last day. Now, that works for some people because they take that procrastination and they then use their essential, uh, essentially, their laziness. And they turn it into um, efficiency by cramming. Anyway, so I hope this sort of opens your eyes a little bit. And then you understand now that when you look at yourself and you say, um, you know, I'm disciplined. We could flip that into a negative. That looks like it's positive. But we could flip it into a negative. Or if you say, I have an addictive personality, we could flip that into a positive. It just depends on how you look at it. And don't use them bullshit as excuses for no reason. I mean, your own. Why? Why lie to yourself? It's the easiest person to lie to. And it's it's hard, you know. I've caught myself out doing this many times before as well. It's a continuous journey, and um, and there's no end point really. We just keep going. Anyway, I will see you on the next episode. Take care.